All right, so I decided that uh, I would do this uh, quick little tutorial tonight on uh, how I create my environments for these product shots. And so for a lot of the product shots that I do um, or that you'll even see out there on social media, the interwebs, you've got these vibrant or um, very desaturated, but just simple environments, right? Single colors, as you can see kind of here for what my scene is, I had this little bit of a pink hue. Um, but the, the nice thing with the way that I go about and do this is I create my materials in a way where they're non-destructive. So they're single nodes that can affect uh, multiple, multiple materials. Um, and it just makes my life a lot easier whenever I've kind of set these up in this way and I can kind of edit and play on the fly and um, really kind of control how dynamic versus flat I want an environment. So what I mean by dynamic is do I want to be able to show shadows? Do I want to be able to show reflections from you know lights and other objects in the scenes? Or do I want this to be more flat and just a single color? Um, so I figured I would kind of walk you guys through my process for that. So just to kind of quickly go over what we got going on right now. So I've got this model that I built. Uh, it's a Fisher Price little phone. If any of you guys have seen this from your childhood. And uh, the environment itself is super simple. So right now I've got turned on, it's this plane with the bend deformer applied to it. I can jump outside of my camera to show you. But that's all that it is, very, very simple. Three lights that are all targeted into this null that I have located right in the middle of our model. And then we've got our camera, right? We jump right back into it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the material that I created and um, just kind of walk you guys through how I create these. Um, first, what I was gonna do is just kind of go through and show you my lighting situation. So we've got light one right here, our fill, Let's switch and toggle these guys on. You can see we're just getting a little bit of these orange shoes kind of in the back. And then we've got a rim light here, um, which I like just slightly kind of blown out. You're getting a lot of contrast with the, the phone against the backdrop. Turn all three of these on within our scene. And this is kind of the, the final composite we got, right? Um, but uh, when I'm creating the materials for these backdrops, what I do is I will just create, uh, I'm use, utilizing Redshift as my renderer, uh, but I'll just create a standard material, okay? We take the default standard material, we're going to apply it to our plane. Right out of the bat, you can see we've got reflections, we've got shadows, we've got this dark gray, all the goodness that comes with the standard material. Um, so what I do when I open these up is I first, I'm going to double click anywhere within the node editor and for the search bar, I'm going to start typing, uh, incandescent. Incandescent is another material that you can create within Redshift. I also need to double click and we're going to type blender. We need a material blender. And the final one is we're going to search for color and grab a color node. So what we do is we want to take our color node, pipe it into the base color of our standard material. Also pipe it into the illumination color of our incandescent material. And then we're then going to take our standard material, uh, pipe it into the base material color of our blender. The incandescent is going to go to layer one material color. And our blender is going to pipe into our output. So now we've got everything configured. It's all set up. Um, I'm just, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to turn off all the reflections for this uh, standard material. But we're still getting all the shadows and everything from the lighting from the model. All right, so we got this set up. Um, so now it's literally just as super simple as coming over here to our uh, color node and choosing a color that you like. So I will crank up a little bit of saturation. Maybe I want to grab something that's like a yellow. You know, maybe I'm, I'm going for something that's kind of like this yellow, slightly orange tint. Um, but this this is the color that I want to start playing with, right? Like I this this is it. Um, now that I have my color kind of established, what I can do is I come over here to my material blender, and since we have this incandescent piped under layer one, if you just come over here to your blend color and you start to adjust your black and white values, all of a sudden you're going to start feeding in and seeing more of that incandescent. Uh, material blended with the standard material, which is piped in your output, right? So you can see that like if we go all the way back to black, a lot more of our shadows and a little bit more dramatic and dynamic with our lighting. If we go all the way to white, it's a completely uh, flat color, right? Just a standard, whatever the yellow kind of hue that we selected. Um, but this, what this does is it creates really quick on the fly opportunity for me to kind of come in here and just kind of play and say, oh, do I, do I like this look of where it's just more of a subtle, 
um, and flat texture? Do I want something where like maybe I'm getting a little bit of shadows that come in here? Uh, maybe I, I like the, you know, the, the subtleness of some of the shadows and I have a little bit of like vignette around the edge of um, the environment I have, but I want to come back and change the color. Well, great. I can just come over here and I can scrub and maybe I want to do something that's like a little bit of a pink, you know, um, or maybe there's like a little bit of a blue, but it's just a really quick and non-destructive way that I can kind of come in here and play and really kind of art direct my scenes. Then when I have something that I like, I'm set to go. And it's all, uh, it's all really as easy as that. Um, the only other thing that I had in my scene, which I was going to show you all, is that if I don't use a plane as a backdrop for a bend deformer, a lot of times I'll also just do two flat planes. I'll have one as a backdrop and one down here uh, on the floor. The floor plane down here is super nice because you can get a little bit of bounce back from some of your lights. And even with the incandescent, you can get a little bit of uh, color seeping through and bleeding in on your, um, your models. So again, if I just apply that texture to plane one, plane two, and again, you can kind of see it's the exact same thing. We have a little bit of vignetting around here on the sides. If I wanted to bring back more of that, I could turn this down. Then it's much more dramatic, much more vibrant. Pull that back a little bit, right? Easy as that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hope this tutorial was uh, helpful for you guys if you're looking to set up super simple and uh, colorful environments. So, all right, thanks.